Good morning, and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Uh, an online webinar is what we are, where we cover um, a variety of topics um, that, of interest to librarians. Uh, the show is free and open to anyone to watch, as are our um, recordings, our live show and our recordings. Um, we do the live show here every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, and then all the recordings are on our website. If you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. You just go to our website and watch, um, see everything we've done in the past. And we do a mixture of things here, uh, presentations, interviews, mini um, training sessions, book reviews. Like I said, anything library related, we want to have it and share it on our show. And we have sometimes Nebraska Library Commission staff that do presentations, and sometimes we bring in guest speakers from outside. And that's what we have this morning. Um, our topic for today is EDGE, um, the EDGE Initiative, Connecting Technology and Community. Um, this is an initiative that we've um, presented on before at some meetings here in Nebraska. I don't believe we've done anything online with it yet. I can't recall. <laughs> but that's great. We have online with us um, Lourdes from the EDGE um, Initiative herself from Urban Libraries Council and Molly, who's actually a library who's been using this. And together they're going to tell us a little bit about um, um, EDGE and how you can use it and how they've been using it. So I'll just hand over to you guys to give more of your full introductions and, and um, take it away with your presentation. Great. Uh, thank you so thank much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Krista. Thanks so much. Um, well, hello, Nebraska. Um, we both, Molly and I, are honored uh, to have been invited to talk about the EDGE initiative uh, with you today. Um, and Chris has shared with me that uh, in addition to Nebraska libraries, there are public and academic libraries from across the country joining us today. So uh, thank you to all of you for being here and joining us. Um, and as Chris has said, I'm the Senior Program Manager for the EDGE Initiative, um, which uh, is uh, led, or the lead agency for the initiative, and I'll talk a little bit about that on an upcoming slide, is the Urban Libraries Council. So um, the, uh, again, the EDGE Initiative falls under uh, one of the initiatives being led by the Urban Libraries Council. And I'm thrilled that uh, Dr. Molly Kinney is joining us today. She has been uh, uh, one of our uh, 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 more successful EDGE libraries, and she's located in Mifflin, Co Mifflin County Library in Pennsylvania. So welcome, uh, Molly. Thank you, Lourdes. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so am I. We're, we're both uh, super excited. Um, so uh, what I'd like to start off with is, uh, since some of you may not be familiar with EDGE, I'll start with a general overview of what EDGE is. Okay. I don't, oh, here, here we go. Okay. So, uh, here we go. All right. So, what EDGE is, is a first of its kind national initiative that helps public libraries assess their current technology services and make improvements that will better serve their communities. Um, so the, the way we like to see it, it's, it's a management and leadership tool that empowers you to elevate your strategic planning, shape the future of your library, and critically, communicate its value in building a strong community. The EDGE initiative was developed by a national coalition of leading library and local government organizations. It was funded fully by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and led by the Urban Libraries Council. And I'm sure that many of these organizations are familiar to you, and we share this list because all of them wanted a role in creating EDGE, which was great for us because these partners add legitimacy to the EDGE metrics. And later, my co-presenter, Molly Kinney, will speak to how uh, name dropping, if you will, these organization names added credibility to her efforts to implement EDGE. So what this group developed was a toolkit, uh, which is what we like to call EDGE, uh, that was filled with useful, scalable tools that help libraries identify both what's working 
and where there's room for improvement. So together, these components, these tools, help libraries plan for the future and it positions them to work directly with local leaders to align on community priorities. So let's uh, do a little bit of a deeper dive. Let's take some time to look at all the tools and resources you'll have as a participating library. So here the EDGE benchmarks are the first ever set of national benchmarks designed to inspire continuous improvement and reinvestment in public access technology in libraries. They serve as reference points against which a library's practices can be compared. And I'll share some uh, examples of, or I'll share um, a couple of benchmarks in upcoming slides so that you can see what those benchmarks look like. The assessment tool, which is the next icon you see there, helps libraries assess and evaluate their current technology-related services. It allows libraries to enter data and find out how they're doing relative to these benchmarks. So this is a point-in-time assessment, and it's intended to measure the services you offer today, not what was offered last year or what you plan to offer next year, but what, what does the library offer its community today? And once a library completes the assessment, EDGE generates recommendations based on the library's responses on how they can improve the library's public technology services. And to help the library implement these recommendations, we provide resources such as templates, tools, and tips. We also provide case studies that feature examples of public libraries of all sizes implementing projects related to the benchmarks. And we do this so that libraries can use them or adapt them to fit their local needs. Additionally, EDGE offers four 90-minute training webinars developed for EDGE by PLA, one of our partners in the creation of EDGE. Training, uh, these training webinars guide libraries in using their EDGE results for planning, uh, advocacy, and outreach activities so that they can build on their uh, existing technology services. And last but not least, the toolkit includes customizable reporting and presentation tools that will help library leaders show how their library supports the local economy, workforce, uh, lifelong learning, and a strong community. So these, it's not just the benchmarks we offer. Uh, the benchmarks are supported by these training webinars and customizable material, materials that help staff demonstrate the quality of their existing technology services uh, to convince decision makers to continue to reinvest uh, in public technology access in libraries. So <clears throat> here's a, sort of a graphic that we find is helpful because uh, the benchmarks are categorized into three key areas that assess, as you can see, community value, that is the, the library's value to its community, uh, engaging uh, the community and decision makers and organizational management. So those are the three main areas into which the 11 benchmarks are grouped. And you'll notice we use the word community a lot, and that's intentional. It's uh, true that the demands and challenges are different at each library. We understand that, um, and we understand that each community has unique needs and demographics. Uh, nevertheless, one of the ideas underpinning EDGE is ultimately to strengthen the library's role as an essential public asset and reorient the public's perception of the library to that of library as community anchor. So that was very intentional in the creation of these benchmarks. And I wanted to show you a couple of examples of the benchmarks themselves. Here's an example of a benchmark in the first section of the assessment, community value. All the questions in the community value section 
are about uh, 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 services and activities and programs that are provided to patrons. And the objective of this section is to determine whether what the library offers matches what the community needs. So as you can see, the benchmarks themselves are aspirational statements. Libraries provide technology resources to help patrons meet important needs related to personal goals and community priorities. But then we probe to see whether a library has taken this aspirational statement and made it into an actionable best practice. So for example, is it meeting its patron needs where it regards uh, finding a job or filing for unemployment? Uh, what of applying for financial aid for college? Uh, so, you know, things like that. We want to get down to the, the actual uh, best practices that the library uh, is, it has. And uh, all of the questions in the next section of the assessment, engaging the community and decision makers, are about library activities designed to help the library better understand the needs of its community, but also uh, build supportive relationships. So as you can see, this benchmark and this section um, focuses on those partnerships and how they expand the resource or they potentially can expand the resources offered by the library. So uh, I'll, I'll stop at these two benchmarks and say that you, you can see all 11 of them as well as the full set of questions asked on the EDGE assessment uh, by visiting libraryedge.org and clicking on benchmarks and resources. The full set is available to you there. So I've talked uh, a bit about EDGE and its components, but I'd like to take a moment to share with you how some actual libraries have implemented EDGE and the types of outcomes they've achieved as a result. So um, the, the first library I show here is uh, Miami, Oklahoma. Looks like Miami, but in Oklahoma it's pronounced Miami. And uh, they uh, have a population of just under 14,000. Um, even before they started with EDGE, they offered at least 25 training classes annually on public access, uh, on technology. And after the EDGE assessment, they also uh, expanded these offerings to start offering one-on-one -on -one 30 minute sessions to accommodate patrons who could not or would not attend the group classes. The library director also uh, increased staff training. She realized from EDGE that the library had a lot of technology. They had all the right devices but none of, and, and software, uh, but none of her staff were considered experts. So she <laughs> scheduled training sessions for every staff person and uh, you know, it's, it's really made an impact. Also, New Brunsfeld, uh, uh, serving a, a larger population of 60,000, uh, there the library director, Gretchen Pruitt, had an eye-opening moment with the EDGE benchmarks. When she started to do research for EDGE, she realized that they were not serving the community's uh, disabled population. The only thing that the library had to serve the needs of this population were large print books. That's that. So since getting their EDGE results, a staff person has taken an ADA class on serving the disabled, and they are developing a comprehensive strategic plan to address the needs of this population. Uh, for example, they're planning on getting a fully accessible computer station and are looking at what low-hanging fruit they can pick off now, for, for instance, modifying an existing station or installing software. So these are just two of the eight case studies we've conducted with H libraries. You can see all eight of the case studies, again, by visiting libraryedge.org. And uh, this graphic reflects what we've learned from Edge libraries about the value of Edge. That uh, what they've told us is that Edge is a valuable tool within libraries through engaging staff as well as within the community where libraries have used the EDGE tools to better communicate their value. 
And this graphic reflects how libraries have talked about what they want EDGE to accomplish for their library. It's also an important theme for today's presentation, which focuses on community engagement and how EDGE prepares a library to succeed and better leverage community support. And uh, again, this theory of change appears on the website. So for if it's not transmitting well, you can view a, a much prettier graphic on libraryedge.org. But uh, it, this is a snapshot of our theory of change, outlining how this important program is creating change across audiences. And I wanted to share it with you today to illustrate that the assessment and the subsequent activities that follow such as the training webinars I mentioned and action planning, all fall under that first step. Uh, so that's to say that that, uh, that first step marks what we hope will be the beginning of a transformative process for libraries. Our goal is to help libraries move along this path toward the ultimate goal of improving the quality of life of members of their community. So we don't want libraries to stop at step one. We want them to keep moving on this path. And I thought it'd be useful to uh, take a moment to look at all the tools um, or to look at the actual online tool and some of the resources that you'll have as a participating library. Once you register for an account and receive your login credentials, you'll have access to the online assessment tool. You'll have a dashboard that allows you, uh, or that shows you rather, exactly where you are in the process. You'll have the ability to export and download files. You'll receive immediate results uh, and uh, recommendations. And we'll be able to customize tools uh, and reopen the assessment to adjust answers as needed. So, uh, for this uh, demonstration, I just wanted to show you um, how when you log in, you'll be taken to this page, which is the, the dashboard, the overview page. Uh, here we provide information about how the assessment works and a brief, brief overview of how you unlock all of the tools and resources in the program, which become available only after you've completed the assessment. So here's the dashboard, and we've made uh, improvements to this dashboard to ensure users can easily recognize where they are in the tool. So for example, here you're on the Getting Started page, um, and the Getting Started button is a deeper blue than the other tabs. When you click on the other tabs, the color will change to show where you are in the process. And an example of a benchmark question, uh, as it looks on the online assessment, uh, or this, this is that. Uh, uh, so uh, I showed you how the benchmarks looked outside of the assessment, but this is how they would look when you're taking the assessment itself. And if you've ever completed a survey monkey, um, this should look familiar. So it's similar kind of radio button technology. Uh, libraries will choose from yes or a version of no. And the different versions of no don't change anything in the final results but it was something that libraries expressed an interest in being able to share. Um, also, uh, it takes between three, uh, I'm sorry, two to three hours to complete the online assessment, but you don't have to complete it all in one sitting. The online tool automatically saves each answer as you move between pages, so you're able to save and come back to the assessment at a later time. And once you complete the assessment, you'll have access, uh, immediate access to your results summary, which is here, the score summary. You'll see the total points achieved, uh, the maximum possible points, which are 1,000, uh, and also the points achieved by each of the strategic area. So here you'll see that this library, which is a test account, uh, scored low on engaging the, or lower than the other areas on engaging the community. You can also click on the view results uh, and reports button to get more detailed information. And you'll have access to a complete report that will display your results, including uh, the answers you provided 
um, by clicking on the download report button below. It's a little whited out, but that report can be downloaded and saved and shared with relevant st stakeholders there. Once you complete the assessment, the other sections of the tool become unlocked and available to you in any order. Uh, and this includes the ability to register for training webinars by clicking on review training opportunities. Uh, it also allows you to review the recommendations I mentioned that you receive based on your responses. These are obviously tailored to your library. And uh, you'll, it'll also open up that last uh, step, step four, uh, take action, where you can create an action plan um, and customize presentation tools so you can uh, showcase what you've done to your stakeholders. So um, as I've mentioned, uh, when you complete the assessment, you receive tailored recommendations based on your responses. And the recommendations are essentially uh, an action statement driven by the benchmarks. So for example, the recommendation you see there for 2.1 is ensure video, audio recording, and editing software is available in at least one location. Uh, you don't have to choose every recommendation. You can choose the one you can choose which ones to add to your action plan. And we recommend selecting uh, no more than 10. Um, three to five uh, is what we recommend. Some some pick, you know, six to ten, which is fine. But uh, we've also seen some libraries pick 30 or 40. And we discourage that because we feel if you prioritize everything, you prioritize nothing. Um, and so it's better to, we, we encourage libraries to take bite-sized chunks um, for their action plan. Under each recommendation, there are also resources. If you click on that, it, you'll see that it's hyperlinked. Uh, it's, it's a blue font. Uh, and it says five resources. And if you click on that, it expands to show you templates, tools, and tips that will help you implement that recommendation. So we don't just say, hey, uh, you know, ensure video auto recording and editing software and let you figure out how to do that. We will help you, uh, we'll give you resources that will make it easier for you to implement that recommendation. And uh, here is uh, the beginning of an action plan, which is one of the pe pieces that we believe will be most helpful for libraries because it, it'll help guide you on what to focus. Uh, it's also a flexible tool because it allows you to manage each of those action items um, and uh, you know, monitor progress. So if you click on number one, say, that Ensure Video Auto Recording, it'll ask you to select from a drop-down of uh, not started, in progress, or completed. So it allows you to monitor that progress. Um, and last but not least is the action plan, I'm sorry, is the executive tools, also a results-oriented tool. It was created to help you advocate for the great things you're already doing as much as the ones that you plan on doing. So this is one we hope uh, uh, libraries will take advantage of early and often. Uh, the executive tools include a downloadable guide on how to use these tools, a sample one-page leave-behind, to show you what the finished product should look like, a customizable one-page leave behind that each library can create, and sample PowerPoint templates that you can use to create brief presentations. So all of that in this step. This is an example of the one-page leave behind that you'll create in the tool that we hope you'll leave with your city managers or mayors when you're done telling them how great your library is. And um, one of the things that we're most excited about is the peer comparison tool. Uh, during our, the soft launch of our initiative last year, uh, we, uh, or after rather, we conducted an evaluation. And many library leaders expressed the desire for more context around their score, rather than an apples to oranges comparison between libraries of vastly different sizes. So you saw the score summary, if you recall, you had a maximum of 1,000 points. So libraries last year they were, that tested edge were scoring 200 or 400 or 600. And they had no way of understanding, well, is that good 
is it is it bad? You know, I guess it's good if I'm closer to 1,000. And so the peer comparison tool we're creating is a direct response to those concerns. So in a few months, we'll be able to give libraries data on how other libraries of a similar size scored on the assessment so that they can make more appropriate comparisons. Approximately 800 libraries nationwide were randomly selected from seven peer groups that were defined by the population they serve. So, for example, peer group one were libraries serving less than 5,000. Peer group two, 5 to 15, so on and so forth, through peer group seven, serving over 350,000 library uh, uh, patrons. So these are obviously the large munici municipal systems. So we're going to use the results from these libraries to uh, create a peer comparison tool so that libraries that are big, say over 350,000, can see what the average score are for libraries of their size. Conversely, for the peer group or for the small libraries, they can aptly compare to other libraries of their size. And the tool will allow libraries to compare their score in aggregate as well as by benchmark to other libraries of their size rather than to the point total of 1,000. So we're really looking forward to that. We're expecting that tool around September of this year. So. Um, and, and that's that's sort of the, the, the overview I had. The, the you know I wanted you to look at what the uh, actual online assessment looked like, as well as uh, give a general overview of the development of the initiative and where it's at today. Um, and before I uh, introduce uh, Molly, I'd like to pause and see if anyone has any questions on the information that I've presented so far. Yeah, thanks, Lourdes. That was. Um I, I love the edge tools. <laughs> um, as I said, we had been um, started looking at them back in 2011, really, the first time we first heard the noises of something coming, and we presented on it at a couple of technology planning summer camps we had here in Nebraska. And as it's been going on, been keeping an eye on things. So very interesting um, and useful, I think, uh, that people can use this. Actually, my favorite part, I think, is the end thing, the, at the end when you can um, – generate things, uh, presentations and documents to then show your um, patrons and your money people and your administration, here's what we need to do or here's what we've done that's good. Um, and that it can, it can spit out that kind of great resources for you. Well, and can you hear me, Krista? Yep. Okay, great. Yeah, and, and that was a, a very intentional piece because, uh, you know, uh, traditionally uh, many municipalities are used to sort of a, a need-based approach, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is where we are failing, if you will, or maybe, you know, this is where we're not doing great and this is what we need. But we really wanted to reorient that thinking uh, and, and also make it an asset-based approach. Like mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes libraries are already doing wonderful things and telling no one about it, you know? Right. So like we know, but You're doing them don't. and people are using the resources and coming to the programs and you think that's great, but outside of the people who are already using it, you need to be tooting your own horn too. <laughs> that's right. And Absolutely. so the executive tool allows you to do both things. You could talk about, hey, you know, you could do two points and say, this is what we're doing great. Uh, even if you're a star library, if you will, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. say, yeah, we want to continue being that. Mm -hmm. you know, and here's, so help us do that. Yeah, and when you get those peer comparisons, here's something great we're doing, and look, all these other libraries are doing it too. This is the future of stuff that libraries need to be thinking about and doing because we're all trying to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. So if anybody does have any questions or comments, you can use the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface to type in. Or if you have a microphone, just say, I have a microphone, unmute me, and I'll, I can do that. We do have one question that came in. It's actually from uh, Susie Dunn. She's at uh, Southeast Community College here in Lincoln, uh, Nebraska. She wants to know if there's been any interest expressed by special libraries or other types of libraries in using this tool. I know it's, this is geared to public libraries, but have you had interest from other types of libraries? We have. Uh, it hasn't been overwhelming, but that also mm -hmm. could simply be uh, a fact of, you know, uh, exposure, right? So they're just starting mm -hmm. to hear about it. Maybe the more they hear about it, the more uh, interest will be generated. Mm -hmm. um, our, our marketing uh, efforts have been, uh, you know, around public libraries. Mm -hmm. And um, it just we, became an actual uh, full able-to-use tool just this past January, correct, of this year? 
That's correct. It right. launched okay. on January twenty second yeah. nationally. Okay, yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Um, so we have had some uh, interest. Um, at this time, it, it will remain a tool for public libraries, although anyone can download the Edge Assessment Workbook, which is a, a replica of the, the questions online, and, and, and a, you know, uh, and it might help them, uh, you know, it, it may provide some metrics, but there's not a formal way of assessing yourself online and getting results unless you're um, a public library. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay. at this time, it, there's not a, a plan to expand beyond public libraries. Okay, great, thanks. Um, no other questions came in just now, um, so I think we could go ahead on to Molly. Um, but if anyone does have any questions while they're talking, feel free to type them in, and we'll grab them when, when we can. All right, go so um, I'll, I'll go ahead and introduce uh, Dr. Molly Kinney of Mifflin County, Pennsylvania. She has been uh, a, a library, uh, you know, who has used Edge and done wonderful, exciting new things with it. And I can't wait to hear her speak. I can't wait for all of you uh, to listen to her great story. So with that, I will uh, cede the floor to you, Molly. Well, thank you. And good morning from central Pennsylvania, where it's hot and miserable and the grass is growing. Um, I would like to tell you a little bit about Mifflin County uh, by way of putting some context into our conversation. Mifflin County is small, we are rural, we rank 66 out of 67 counties in per capita income. We are aging 76% of our households do not include a 0 to 18 year old in the house, 76%. Um, we were already depressed. So the latest Great Depression, well, it really had a significant impact on our population in our county. And this is a county that's very close-knit. Um, if you don't know everybody, you know somebody who knows the person you don't know, so that you can be introduced to this that person a lot of faith-based organizations and civic groups. Um, so we had, you can advance Lourdes, we had uh, five branches but closed two just in the past year. We have 12 full and part-time staff members, 25 volunteers, and about a $500,000 a year operating budget. <clears throat> now, if you're somebody from a larger library or somebody from a special or an academic library, you may be thinking, well, you know, how is this going to help me because I'm not any of those things she's talking about. However, I think you can. Uh, I'm going to give you some very practical, practical tips uh, about the assessment tool and the results. And no matter what size library you are, or no matter what kind of library you are, um, you can certainly extrapolate and use the information. So I was hired in January of 2013. And during the interview process, this is Lourdes's favorite story. <laughs> During the interview process, the interview team told me that the library had a few financial problems. Well, what library doesn't have a few financial problems? I mean, I came from a university library in Florida that had millions of dollars, and we still had a few financial problems. So I figured, well, you know, that's just par for the course. And my first day was January 14th, 2013, and the administrative assistant, who also functions as the bookkeeper, came into my office <clears throat> and she said, um, Dr. Kinney, here's our checkbook and we have $36.11 and here are December's bills. And the friends met the first payroll of January. 
does a little more than a few financial problems. Um, and after I got done panicking and said, okay, okay, I, you know, I, I'm not going to hyperventilate just yet, um, I was already, I had already been looking around the library. And so we had no broadband and the ILS was 14 years old and we had a technology plan that, Lord, I, it was so out of date, I just threw it out. We were still using original Gates computers when the Gates Foundation did that computer rollout. And we had a staff that didn't know what they didn't know. So a few financial problems were added into that. So um, I was really searching to come up with um, a way to focus our attention, to figure things out, to begin to develop some kind of plan, because the library didn't have a strategic plan either. <clears throat> so we were asked to be a soft launch for the EDGE initiative. And my first thought was, oh my god, it's just one more thing I have to do. But when you really take a look at this tool, it really does have the power, with our help of course, our implementation, uh, to change the service to the community. You just got to be terminally perky about this. This isn't one more thing you have to do. I mean, this really is a tool for change. And you have to permeate and integrate your organization with the initiative. In my case, my entire future, I felt, revolved around the edge. Because to come up with this kind of plan on my own would have taken years. I didn't even have years. We got our state aid check, and I realized that we could operate until September 1st, and then the Mifflin County Library was going out of business. So I used this tool as if my life depended on it. And we wanted to take a long-term approach to the initiative. So how did we go about this? The first thing that we did was develop an attitude. And Lourdes referred earlier to using those partnering names to give you a layer of credibility in your conversations. So right away when I told my board, oh well, this is an initiative by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Everybody's ears perked up. You know, it wasn't just me coming and saying, that's what we're going to do. Realize that the results aren't going to be anything new to you, or at least probably not. And the adage that we used was, you know, if you give a man a fish, he eats for a day, and if you teach a man a fish, or if you teach a man to fish, he eats for a lifetime. Those rollout computers that happened 10 years ago or 11 years ago, they were the fish. This initiative teaches us how to fish. The next thing that we had to do was get everybody on board, because you can't do this alone. If you try to do this alone, what you have in the end is you have backed the edge. Or whoever you designate if you're the library director and have people that you can designate to. It becomes their project. And then that's exactly what it is, a project in this, to relegate this initiative to a project is to do a disservice both to your community. So <laughs> I was the library's edge leader. You know, I, I worked really hard to understand what this initiative was about and how to use the tools. 
but I've also worked with my leadership uh, management team so that they were on board, they helped to complete the assessment. And here's just a little tip. When you do the assessment, print it off and do it in paper. That way you can talk to others about it. I had my entire leadership team do the assessment each on their own, and then we came together, got a master copy of the thing, and then went on to the EDGE website and filled out. We took the quote survey. Um, we talked to all staff. We talked to the Board of Trustees. We talked to the Friends Group. And we also talked to funders. If you just pick one person from each of your funding bases, or for those of you who are in university libraries, if you have a faculty advisor group or student advisory group, you can, you can bring them into this process. So pick one person from each of those funding groups or support groups and get their support and let them sell the initiative to their colleagues. Last of all, we needed to get the community at large to understand how exciting this was and how it provided the opportunity for change. So those were kind of our initial steps at getting everybody um, going. So then we took the assessment. Mm -hmm. I want to be in that 600 library that Lourdes showed you. <laughs> it was pathetic. Pathetic, our results. We had 124 action items. I just took a look at that and I thought, oh man, it was bad. But I know it's this bad. So don't be discouraged by the recommendations. There are going to be questions that you are going to answer. Nope, we don't do that, and we don't have any plan to do that. That still shows up in your results. It still shows up in the recommendation. So, um, you know, some things you can filter out automatically. I mean, for example, my library, my main library is um, about 1,200 square feet. I have a branch library that's 563 square feet. One of the recommendations was that we did not have enough computers per capita. Well, I'd like to know where I'm supposed to put those computers. Because I can't hang them from the ceiling, and I have no floor space to put them. So, you know, we just kind of took that recommendation and left it there, but moved to one. Um, <clears throat> another priority was is that we we should there, there's a priority there under the uh, that third category, which totally eludes me right now. Uh, organizational something, and. One of the things that it asks is about privacy screens. Well, um, I don't want privacy screens. The unique individuals that come into my library, I, I, no, I don't want them to have that kind of privacy. If they need privacy, I'll find a space to put them. So, you know, take a look at the recommendations and don't be discouraged. Prioritize those um, recommendations over a several year period. Talk about the results. Get the word out, however it is that you want to do that. For example, we have a county commissioner on our board. I, when I created my action plan, I created it and included absolutely everything, all 124 recommendations. I then went back and created a second action plan where I took things out. Then I created a third action plan of what 
I wanted to work on right away. That was the results that I got out to um, our funders, the key stakeholders, the staff, and the community at large. We took our priorities and we added them to our position descriptions at all levels. Clerk 1s, Clerk 2s, all the way up to the Assistant Director. We somehow tied these edge results that we wanted to work on into our position descriptions. And then we picked, the management team picked one priority that the board could focus on, and they picked a second priority for the friends to work on. And we told each other, uh, the board and the friends worked together so that they could tie each priority to the other and to the overall initiative. And then, <clears throat> We asked. We asked for seed money. You know, <clears throat> we're always asking for money, but we're not very good at asking for specific money. So rather than go to our funders and say, oh, we need money for this EDGE initiative, we asked for some seed money. We asked from the county commissioners. We asked from the friends group. We asked community groups. And then we allocated, after we figured out we were going to be able to operate past September 1st, we allocated money in the 2014 budget for priority. So Then we started communicating, really communicating with uh, the whole broad-based community. You've got to keep talking about the edge. Whether, if you have a Twitter account, if you have a, a Facebook, um, we did letters to the editor. Uh, we, we have a small local daily newspaper. And we have a reporter who was in the Children's Librarian story time when, when the reporter was three and four. And she, of course, has become a big library advocate. So we call her up and say, excuse me, why don't you come do a, um, an article about the edge? And believe it or not, we even made the front page below the fold, but we made it. Um, put the edge logo on your website as a hyperlink so that people can go to the edge and they can see um, what this is about and um, spend some time um, figuring it out if they're interested in that. And then use the edge toolkit when it's appropriate, but do customize it for your community. Um, our community likes its information very simple at about fourth grade reading level. And so when we write things, that's the audience that we write to. Um, I'm not sure that that's exactly the audience that the toolkit is geared toward, but it gives you a framework and it gives you an outline so that you're not coming up from scratch um, to, do, to do things. And then refine your elevator speech. Be so comfortable with that that you could do it in your sleep. And be practical. When you are talking to people, answer the question, what can Edge do for me, before somebody asks. Because that's what it's all about. You know, people want to know what it can do for them. So get that question answered right up front. So here are the results after doing all of that. And I would admit to you, when you get these recommendations, they're given to you in priority. Recommendation one, recommendation two, recommendation three. First level recommendations take the least amount of staff and money. 
The second level takes a little more staff, a little more money, and the third one, of course, takes the most money in staff. So we did most, most of our recommendations, and I'm one of those people that picked more than Lourdes wanted us to, but I was in a mess, and I wanted to get this done, and we needed to get this done, so we selected 12 priorities. Um, and most of it we've done in-house with existing staff with the seed money that we went out and asked for. So we asked the Lions Club for 500 and then we asked the Women's Service Club for 300 and we asked the, arch, uh, the local Catholic church if they would do a tithe a tie um, for us. That's how we collected this, little bits at a time, but it was focused money. So the county commissioners gave us 16000 in seed money. We shifted people's staff duties around, and we created a technology services coordinator position. This was some, I took a person out of technical services um, who was doing copy cataloging but had an interest and some background knowledge and moved her to the technology services coordinator position. We designed a completely new website. Here in Pennsylvania, we have district libraries, which are resource centers for those of us who are smaller and um, don't have the staff or the resources. So some of our district services staff wrote some code for us. They provided some training. Um, they generally provided their expertise, but this new technology services coordinator actually created the site. Um, Lourdes, do you want to advance that? Thank you. We have a completely new broadband network, and we did hire a consulting firm to help us with this. I don't know that stuff. I don't want to know that stuff. I knew that I didn't have the time or expertise to do that. So we did get a consulting firm to come in and help us with that. We updated our integrated library system, and it's now cloud-based. Um, and we installed the time and print management software on all the public access computers. I know this might not be a big deal to most of you because time print management software has been around for a long time. Well, we still had staff who were like hand recording when Mary got on the computer and then watching their watching the clock and then walking over and saying, Mary, you have to get off the computer now. That's not a good use of staff time. Um, or at least in my instance, I had bigger things to do with staff. I wanted them to be engaged in different kinds of activities. And then we implemented a staff training program to help people update and learn their new skills. So where are we right now? Well, hey, we're still operating. Um, and we are still working on the edge. And we will continue to work on the edge for the next five years. I mean, I, I'm developing the strategic plan right now that includes pieces of this initiative that will take us five or more years um, to implement. And the community engagement piece, you know, you think, oh, yeah, but computers are going to change in five years, and Lord knows what else is going to be out there. That's only one component of this initiative. So, that community engagement part can take you up to five years. But here's, here's what I really like about this. You know, <clears throat> life just should not be a journey to the end where you just go through the motions. But you should skid broadside in with a cloud of smoke, thoroughly used up, totally worn out, and loudly proclaiming, wow, what a ride. <laughs> and that's what the EDGE initiative has been for us. And um, we thank 
all of the partnering agencies, and particularly the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, for helping us to do that. So whatever it is that you are thinking about doing with the EDGE, I strongly encourage you to do that. Um, it, it is well worth the effort. Your community is much, much better off for uh, the implementation of um, the recommendations and the um, information that they will get out of this EDGE initiative. Um, thank you for having me. And if you have any questions, please type away. <laughs> Great. Thanks so much. Uh, sorry, Chris. I just want okay. to take a moment myself to thank um, Molly Kinney. I know we're we're about to wrap up the hour, but she is a tough <laughs> act to follow, folks. <laughs> that, that was amazing. Thank yeah. you, Molly. Yeah. You're no, it's, yeah. No, it's no problem. But we can go as long as needed with questions and whatnot. We're not going to get cut off right at um, right at 11 a.m. or anything. No problem. Um, but yeah, I agree with Lourdes. I know she said, you know, I want to have Molly on. She's awesome. And I agree now. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, that was yeah great information, especially about what you guys were doing there. Um, I, I feel wow, your library was in bad shape when you <laughs> when you got there. Um, but I hope things are you know this is going to get things uh, or has gotten things on track, and we'll keep going that way. Um, we do have a couple. Yeah, I'm we do have a couple of questions. Um, I think it'd be probably one for each of you, but I'll go with Molly first. Um, can you, sh would you be able to share, and I'm not sure if you'd do it here, but we could maybe get the info, um, the job description for the technology services coordinator. Um, this library. I'd be happy to share it. Yeah, this library says they're currently evaluating staff changes in light of their new strategic plan and would be interested in what you guys came up with for that particular position. Oh, absolutely. Um, if you send how do it, I get the info? Do I send it to you, Chris? Yeah, if you can, if you you want to send it to me, I will include it in the show notes afterwards when we um, put the recording up. Um, I can include it as an extra document that's part. Um, in addition to the recording, we'll have the slides, and then I can um, put a, a links to your library. I have already in there links to libraryedge.org, and I can include the document too for people to look at. Uh, now I will tell you. Um, that our library is a union shop, all nine of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so you could probably tweak this. There were some things that I would have loved to have included, mm -hmm. but I couldn't because this employee is a member of the bargaining unit. Mm -hmm. So, right, of course. for example, you know, I would have liked to have made her a manager and and gotten her out of the bargaining unit role. Unfortunately, that was not a possibility. Mm -hmm. So I'll send this to you. And if some of it doesn't make sense, um, or if you have additional questions, Crystal, will my email address be part of the record? Um, if we get, um, was it on the first screen of these slides here, um, Lourdes? The the yeah. The slides here, um, we can either link to them or put up a PDF for them some afterwards. Um, I didn't know, you know if your what? contact you info was on go... these or not. Or actually, well, if we have a link to the li your library. Yeah, I do. I'm mean, including a link go. to your library's website. You'll get yes. me. Mm -hmm. You'll yep. get me. MifflinCountyLibrary.org, but it will Correct. be included in the links afterwards, so you'll be able to find. Um, and I found that I actually found your info there. There's a staff page. Easy has her email right there. Cool. Um, the other question we got in that I think would be for Lourdes is, are there press releases available in the tools section? Uh, there are not press releases available, okay. but if your library is participating in Edge and you'd like one, I could make one available to you. And uh, Krista, you can include that uh, for the attendees on this call, just as you will uh, the job description. So I can make that available. Mm -hmm. right. And, and then, for those of you who haven't registered, I just want to say yeah. uh, it's really simple. You just go to libraryedge.org and you could go on the upper right hand side of the page and click sign up. It's super easy, uh, as is downloading the Edge Assessment Workbook. Molly mentioned that uh, her and her staff each printed one. I, I thought I, that, that was such an interesting approach to me. Normally one is printed, but that each of them completed the assessment to then come together and say, did
did your answer match? And if not, why not? And that's just a wonderful way to engage the entire staff in the process. That workbook is on our website. Anyone can download it and you can begin collecting the data that you can later input into the online assessment. Right, so you don't have to actually <laughs> sign up to just to, at least to get the um, the workbook. The workbook, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You can start on the process before formally signing up and requesting an account. So, mm -hmm. cool. And now, also, just, there's no I'm sorry, there's just no, one it, practical yeah, thing about the. Go ahead. <laughs> um, just one practical thing about taking the assessment. If you aren't sure of the answer, answer no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, here's a for example, um, we were on our website, we, we do have some useful links tied, and, and that ties back to that benchmark about resources that you're offering to the community. Um, but we offer them, but I don't think they're very good. So I said no because I didn't like the quality of what was on the website. By the same token, don't overthink your answers. Be thoughtful, but don't overthink them. Mm -hmm. That's great advice, Molly. We get that question a lot on like how, uh, how people should answer. And I'd like to call out on our website on libraryh.org, on the upper right hand side is, you know, sign up for the account. On the upper left hand side is a link to our support center. That support center is our knowledge base. And one of the wonderful features it includes is an assessment answer key. So it walks you through how to answer each assessment question. Literally it says, you know, benchmark one, 1.1, 1 1.2, and it'll, it'll list a question and it'll say, answer yes if, answer no, you know, the three no's, and it'll give like a little guide as to when you should answer yes or when you should select one of the no answers. That's all available on the Edge Support Center. We've worked really hard to build out that knowledge base so that if you have a question, you don't have to wait for the Support Center to respond. Although we respond uh, or we try to respond within 48 hours, we wanted that information to be immediately available to, to Edge users, and it is now. So. If you want to look at how to answer 5.4, you could click on the support center, look at it, and you know if it's if you still have questions, you can submit a support ticket. But you'll probably find your answers there. Mm -hmm. Cool. Now, there's also I don't see any. There's no cost to um, register and use this. That's correct. There is no cost. Uh, it is open to all public libraries in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, so cool. you would on the registration form, you would select your state and then uh, your library from the drop-down. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no cost to participate or for any part of the toolkit, the assessment, all of the mm -hmm. resources we discussed today, it's all free of charge. Right. So, so for um, US... Of the funding for Bill and Gates. Mm, right, so that's the restriction. So for a U.S. public library, go ahead and register. If you're not a public library, download the workbook and use that to try and uh, keep up with these kind of things at your library. Um, that's correct. Yeah. Any other questions anybody has? We are a little after 11 o'clock, but that's okay. If you have anything urgent you need to ask right now, get it in. Otherwise, we will have links for all their contact info. Um, you can reach out to them afterwards. Do you have any more slides left here, or is this it? No, this, this is one. Good. Okay, and cool. I, yeah, and I'd like to share our contact information, as Molly mentioned. So perhaps mm -hmm. in the email you send out, Chris, if you could share my contact mm -hmm. information. Yeah. I'll be glad to field any uh, follow-up questions that people may not think of right now. Mm -hmm. We can add that, not a problem. Doesn't look like anything urgent is being typed in right now. So I think we will wrap it up officially for the morning. Thank you so much, Lourdes and um, Molly. This was great. Um, like I said, as I said, we've been monitoring EDGE since the when we first heard about it. And so I'm glad that it's finally come out and become an actual tool that libraries can use. <laughs> Um, thanks for us having too. us. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having Thank us. You. Thank you, Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to pull back presenter control now to my computer. And and here is, let's see, I'll get it posted up here. Did you? There we go. Here is the Edge um, website that you were talking about. Um, mm -hmm. The sign up over here in the upper right, sports center over here, and also information about the benchmarks and everything you can find here from the site. 
And this has been added to our um, Use Delicious to say, um, share any links that are related to our sessions. Uh, so this is, we've got a link to Edge, to um, Molly's Library, and the other two libraries you happen to mention in your presentation. I know there are other ones that were um, uh, pilot libraries and whatnot, but these are the ones that you mentioned, so I figured I added theirs in as well. Um, so that will wrap it up for this morning. Thank you very much, uh, Molly and Lourdes, and everyone for attending. Um, the show is being recorded, so it will be available later this afternoon, we'll say. <laughs> and um, you all, I'll an email you all to let you know when the recording is available and up for you to um, view. It is right here in our archive section on our Encompass Live website is where we have all the links to all of our recordings of all of our previous shows. Um, that's where you'll be able to go get it, but I'll send you guys all an email uh, directly to let you know when it's there. So that will wrap it up for this morning. I hope you join us next week when our topic is our Tech Talk with Michael Sowers. Uh, Michael Sowers is the Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And once a month, he comes on Encompass Live and does a more techie-oriented um, show. And this month, next week, he has um, entered the, let's see, Mozillarian. I'll say I pronounced that right. <laughs> Weaving the Mozilla and library communities. Mozilla is the organization that that puts out Firefox, among other things, and they've got this initiative going um, where they're working with libraries more on a whole bunch of different projects. So we're going to have some staff here from the Mozilla Foundation, um, from Facilitating Change, a um, consulting group, and a um, librarian from Stockholm, Sweden Public Library, who's involved in this initiative as well, will be with us next week. So uh, sign up for that. Um, next week. And if you are on Facebook, you can like us on our Facebook page at Encompass Live. And we um, post notices there of when shows are starting, reminders of recordings, new sessions, whatever. So if you're a big Facebook user, definitely like us there and you can keep up with what we're doing. Other than that, thank you very much for attending. And we'll see you next week on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. <laughs>